Okay, and the last one would be about a verse in the Bible that I always see where it says, I think it was for, um, I forgot for which prophet it was, but it said that kill every donkey and... Uh, oh, yeah. Kill all of us. We know it's hyperbole, meaning exaggerated form of speech, because the same Bible says that God would not wipe out all the Canaanites, but allow them to remain in the land in order to test the Israelites. That's in the same Bible that people misquote. Oh, here, let me show you that. It, it's not literal. The fact that God did not intend for all the Canaanites to be wiped out. Here, let me show you. And by the way, this wasn't for all nations. It was for the Canaanites. Why the Canaanites? Because the Bible teaches God will put up with so much sin. But when you reach a limit of sin, that's when he comes and has to wipe you out because you become cancerous. And to prevent the cancer from spreading, he wipes it out. Like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He wiped it out, right? That's yeah. even in the Quran. Or when he flooded the people of Noah. Yeah. When God flooded the people of Noah, which is in the Quran, did he spare children, animals, and women? Or they all got flooded? Oh. Okay, so there you go. That's how God works. But when does he get to that point? Well, before I show you. Exodus 13, 17, 18. Now it happened when Pharaoh had led the people, let the people go. God did not guide them, by the way, of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near God. Now watch. Why doesn't wipe everyone out? Look at his wisdom. Lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Hence God turned the people to the way of the wilderness, to the Red Sea, and the sons of Israel went up in battle array from the land of Egypt. Now notice what God notices wisdom here. He's saying, when it happened that Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not guide them by the way of the land of the Philistines. That's the Canaanites. That's the land that they were supposed to conquer, right? But he didn't let them get near it because these people were untrained and they may be afraid of war. So he didn't let them enter the land and fight. He kept them desert for 40 years. Okay, that's one example. You see it? Yeah. Good not. Okay. The Philistines are the Canaanites. Now watch. Exodus 23, 29, 30. Now they're in wilderness. He's preparing them to get them ready to enter the land. Look what he says. Watch what he says. The Canaanites, I will not drive them out before you in a single year. But wait, I thought... God said, when you enter the land, wipe everything that breathes. No, look, he says, you won't do that. Lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little until you become fruitful and take the land as inheritance. So right here, he tells you, you're not going to wipe them out completely and kill everything that breathes. That's not going to happen. You're going to enter there and slowly they'll be driven out of the land. Slowly. Do you see it there? Yeah. Okay, now more. Deuteronomy 7, 22 to 23. And Yahweh your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. But wait, I thought he's, they got to wipe out everything that breathes. That's if you read it out of context and don't read it in context. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly. Oh, so he's telling them you're not going to wipe them out completely? So you're not going to kill every man, child, woman, and beast? Lest the wild beasts become too numerous for you. But Yahweh your God will give them over before you and you'll throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. But how? Over time, slowly, little by little. But there's a caveat. I'm going to explain it. Judges 1, 17 to 19. Then Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they struck the Canaanites living in Zephar and devoted to destruction. destruction. So the name of the city was called Horma, and Judah captured Gaza with its territory, and Ashkelon with its territory, and Ekron with its territory. Now Yahweh is with Judah, and they took possession of the hill country, but watch what Yahweh did not allow them to do. They could not dispossess the inhabitants of the valley because they had iron chariots. So God didn't even allow them to overcome this particular group who had iron chariots. So if God wanted them completely wiped out, he would have done it. But he's not doing it. Now watch. Judges 2 verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> then the angel of Yahweh came up from Gilgal to Bochim. And he said, I brought you up out of Egypt and led you into the land which I have sworn to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And as for you, you shall cut no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. But wait, if they're going to wipe out everything, there is no one in the land for them to make a covenant with, right? Yeah. But here, are you noticing it? When you come into the land, you're not going to make a covenant with them. But if they're going to wipe everything out, there is no one to make a covenant with. No, they're not going to wipe everything out. So when you enter, the people there... Don't make a covenant with them. <clears throat> you shall tear down their altars. But you have not listened to my voice. What is this you have done? Therefore, I also said, I will not drive them out before you. So I'm not going to drive them out completely. They're going to remain there as a thorn in your sign to tempt and test you. 
but they will become a thorn in your side and their gods will become a snare to you. So it happened that when the angel of Yahweh spoke these words to all the sons of Israel, the people lifted up their voices and wept. So they named that place Bohim and they sacrificed Yahweh. Now watch here. Judges 2, 19 and 23. But it happened when the judge died that they would turn back and act more corruptly. Now this is after Joshua has entered the land and he's taken Canaan. This is long after Joshua's death. Are you following me? Yeah. If Joshua was to wipe out everything, there would be no Canaanites left after he died. But notice, long after he died, there's still Canaanites in the land. But it happened when the judge died that they would turn back and act more corruptly than their fathers. And following other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They did not abandon their practices or their stubborn ways. I'm talking about the Israelites. So the anger of Yahweh burned against Israel. And he said, because this nation has tres trespassed against my covenant, which I commanded their fathers and not listen to my voice, I also will no longer dispossess before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Wait, Joshua didn't wipe out everyone? Because there are nations that were left alive in the land? That's what it says right here? Mm. You see it? Yeah, yeah. So this is a misreading of the Bible, and it says, wipe out everything that breathes. That is what we call hyperbole, because if you read it in context, God did not allow them to wipe out everything that breathes, so that long after Joshua died, God can say there are still nations left alive in the land. Mm -hmm. In order to test Israel by them, whether they will keep the way of Yahweh to walk in it as their fathers did or not. So Yahweh allowed those nations to rest. Oh, so he let them live? in the land, not dispossessing them quickly, and he did not give them into the hand of Joshua. You see that, Christians? You misread the Bible in assuming that God literally meant wipe everything. Because right here, long after Joshua died, it says God did not allow Joshua to wipe them completely. Everyone seeing it? You Christians as well? All right. So here's another proof. If God meant it literally, there would be no Canaanites after Joshua died, right? Yeah. But how come there are still many nations left alive that God did not allow Joshua to wipe out? Because that's not understood literally if we read in context. And here's the proof. Then Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Okay, but wait. I thought Joshua was supposed to wipe out all the Philistines. Why are they still alive years after Joshua's death? Because that's not what God meant. Now, final thing I want to show you. Yeah. Did you know if the Canaanites repented, none of them would be destroyed? You know how I know? Oh. Here, Joshua 2, 8 to 11. Here. Rahab, who's part of the Canaanites, when she showed mercy to the spies and gave them lodging and saved them from being found out, it says that God spared her and her family. Joshua 2, 8 to 11. Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that Yahweh has given you the land, and that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land have melted away before you. So we heard God is with you. We've heard about the miracles and signs he did against the Egyptians. So we know your God is real. So if they knew that, why are they still fighting God? But those who repent, for we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. Indeed, we heard it, and our hearts melted, and a courageous spirit no longer rose up in any man because of you. For Yahweh your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Because of that, the text says, she was told to put a crimson thread outside the window of the wall. So when they entered the land, they would know that's her home. And she was spared in her family, and she's mentioned as a woman of faith. She was forgiven. And included as a woman of faith, even in Jesus's lineage here. Her name was Rahab. Hebrews 11, 31. By faith, Rahab, the harlot, did not perish along with those who were disobedient after welcoming the spies in peace. And here, James 2, 25. And in the same way, was not Rahab, the harlot, also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? So here you find the other principle. If they repent, God would spare them because he wants them to be saved, not destroyed. This is why you have to read the Bible in context. Okay. So I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, answered. Um, 